Which these were anomalies, they're not. Joining us now, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, GOP presidential candidate, obviously. Vivek, a lot of this is due to lenient policies put in place by local Democratic leaders. We know that. What could be done on the national level? So, look, I think we can stop subsidizing these bad behaviors at the local level, Brian. I don't think localities should get money, block grants from the federal government, unless they're allowing cops to do their jobs. We know how to address crime in this country. More cops on the street, literally on the street, without being able to look over their shoulder, fear of being sued. That's thing number one. And thing number two is bring back mental health institutions. We have a mental health epidemic across this country. Over the same period that we saw the closure of mental health institutions, we've seen a spike in violent crime in this country. That doesn't mean drugging up a bunch of people with Zoloft and Seroquel. It actually means restoring purpose, faith-based approaches and otherwise. Right. But those are politically incorrect discussions right now. Cops doing their jobs in mental health institutions, I say bring both of those things back. That's how we address violent crime. Uh, the president tried to use federal troops to help out places like Portland and Seattle, and he was vilified for it. Now you see the results. I talked to Kevin O'Leary this morning. He's got a great economic mind, obviously, yeah. from Shark Tank. And I asked him about Bidenomics, and he says, the problem is the money keeps going to corporations. Here's what he said would work, and here's what's not. Listen. Small guy, the business between five and 500 employees, He's been cut off at the regional bank level. The rates that he pays for money have gone from 4 to 5 percent to 11 to 17. Meanwhile, we're going to write $2 trillion to the big guys. But it seems unfair to me to support a behemoth company that has a lot of its employees outside of America and not my company's small business. The regulations got so strong on the because of the failed regional banks. The ones that survived can't lend money. The rates are so high, small businesses can't get money even to float a payroll. It doesn't seem like this administration knows how to balance a budget or run a dry cleaner, a deli, or a restaurant. So, look, the fact of the matter is prices have shot up, wages have not. People are feeling the pain. And the answer is Bidenomics is really only working in name because of the optical illusion they've created by government spending in picking favorites. The number one sector that expanded jobs, Brian, in the first half of this year was actually the government itself. That's the same government that's picking favorites in the private sector. If you're in the electric vehicle business or in some sort of climate change driven business, great, they'll shower government aid on you. But small businesses across this country that aren't playing that game, that can't afford to lobby for their business from the federal government, they're the ones left holding the bag. And so what I think we need a revival of in this country, Brian, is true capitalism, not the crony capitalism where you see large companies lobbying for special regulations that insulate them from competition from one sector after another, from banking to, frankly, electric vehicles. But what we actually need in this country is one standard of the rule of law applied to every company. Let them compete. Let right. capitalism once again be the system that lifts all people up from poverty. I'm sure you saw uh, Leader Mitch McConnell real quick uh, freeze up for the second time, yeah. uh, maybe even the third, after his concussion that wiped him out for a while. In a statement, they said uh, McConnell is okay now, that he's medically clear to continue his schedule as planned. Uh, between that, between Fetterman being basically unable to uh, put a sentence together or communicate, and who knows how well he's thinking. We see that Diane Feinstein is not close to being all there, and we see the president doesn't know how to walk off a stage. What does that tell you about where we're at now with our politicians? Well, look, in Mitch McConnell's case, I want to pray for his recovery and hope he and his family are doing well. But let's separate that from a separate issue we have going on in this country. We need a generational change in who actually leads this country forward. There's a reason why young people are badly disaffected by politics. And, Brian, the examples you raised, those are just symptoms of a deeper mentality shift that we need in this country. We're not going to move this nation forward by right. just reciting slogans we memorized 30 years ago. We're going to have to wake up to the unique challenges of the present. That's part of why I'm in this race. I right. understand why young people are badly disaffected by politics. And I do think it's going to take a different generation of leadership to move right. this nation forward. And I think you know the guy that you had in mind when you said that to lead that uh, generation. Vivek Ramaswamy, you've, you've taken, uh, you've become a, a rock star overnight. Big crowds, a lot of critics, a lot of fans. Uh, you brought it on yourself, pal. You used to be able to live a very peaceful life. Vivek Ramaswamy, best of luck on the trail. <laughs> Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.